This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to another episode of Sea Time, where we discuss and analyze some of the biggest entertainment and lifestyle stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and to do the analysis and talking with me, I've got my ever ready co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Olua Oshunke. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> 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 Did you remind you? You remember? <laughs> oh, I <goodness>. remember. <laughs> Okay, Fair. so we're still here. <laughs> Did you put it on your well. phone as an alarm or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so it's the 1st of June. Um, happy New Month, of course, yeah. And um, it's definitely an interesting day as it marks World Milk Day and World Parenting Day. Of course, I have some milk today and I always have plenty of milk. But our focus will be on the latter, which is World Parenting Day. What's your favorite Thing about being a parent, and we have one parent on the table, so maybe we'll start with Ife. It's amazing. Mm. Shadow make us jealous. Mm -hmm. Just talk. Mm. That's all. I That's, all. Yeah, That's your favorite thing. It's amazing, it's Ife. Amazing. How many yeah. times did you write jam? <laughs> I never wrote jam. Are you serious? Uh, um, I want. You didn't I want write jam. You didn't write it. Get into mm -hmm. Babcock. No. Uh, you don't need jam for Babcock. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. Oh, wow, that's mm. nice. Thank God you didn't have to. Thank God you didn't have to. Once, thank God you didn't have to. Anyway, we caught up with a few parents over the weekend, and here is their favorite thing about being a parent. The best part of being a parent for me is watching my children use all the tools I have equipped them with, the moral values I have taught them, you know, with which to live by in the world, watching them use this and become unique individuals in their own right, contributing positively to their communities and their environments. That brings me joy to see, and for me, that's the best part of being a parent. A child, and I'm excited to be a parent. Anytime she calls me mama, it fills my heart. I watch her grow from baby to being a nine-year-old child. And it's been an amazing journey. That's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And to hear her call me, call me mama, that's super. Thank you. The right thing about being a parent is watching these young ones grow. Okay, so for me as a dad to a baby boy, it's amazing watching him grow from day to day. Like um, the challenges. Yeah, I call them challenges. I don't really see them as a problem because I feel like we've all been there and we've all been through that. So the challenges and all, and the feeling that you're helping to shape the future, you're helping shape possibly a generation ahead. Yeah, that's the most exciting thing about being a parent for me. The thing about being a parent, there are many, but um, it's just watching little people come into their own, develop their own personality. I just find myself staring at them thinking, this little person, they become a human being. And then also sharing companionship, sharing their joys, sharing their challenges. Occasionally, I even like bossing them around, just to remind myself that they're not going anywhere. They're my children. Uh, it, it's, it's a real joy. It's a real, it's a real joy. My favorite part about being a parent is being able to shape their lives. I mean, we all know about the seed time and harvest, whatever you sow, you're going to reap. But as a parent, you get like a blank slate and you have the opportunity to turn these little people into um, just amazing leaders for tomorrow. And you get to realize that whatever you model for them, whatever you teach them is what you're eventually going to get out of them. And I think that that's a lesson that's helped me as a parent. <laughs> The favorite thing about being a parent is, uh, for me, it's actually um, watching them grow, like from the day they were born, then to when they grow to a younger daughter, and you know, the process, like it's 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 somehow it's somehow um, fulfilling, like you know, you are part of this, uh, you are responsible for this human being, and it's it's actually cute. Um, and uh, this is one thing I like again is you know, have them sleep on your chest. Uh, it's really cute. Okay, so I know I'm looking forward to be a parent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I I know it's a big job actually, and it's one that um, nobody prepares you for. I don't think anybody really prepares you to be a parent. Mm. You just have to be a parent when you bring a child yeah. um, to this world. And shout out to every parent doing doing it right because yeah. I know there are parents that have been doing you. it right. Thank you. 
<laughs> if uh, as the parents that's doing it right, do you want to add something before we move to other stories? No, it's fine. Just keep doing you as a parent and always know that you're responsible for someone's life. So mm -hmm. whatever you do, think about that person mm. while you do it because um, whatever you do can lead to consequences for that person to suffer. So make sure you're doing it right and you're getting mm. it right. You don't have to be perfect, but just have at the back of your mind that you're also responsible for somebody. Mm. Okay. And I just want to add to that, um, taking a cue from what Gabriel Union said, basically, you don't have to be perfect. Just mm. um, be there, know that you're responsible for someone yeah. and um, just do you, basically. I would say also say to remind them that they are a very key factor in what our future would look like tomorrow, especially raising children per agenda and the issues pertaining that. It would be really nice for us to get more conscious with how we raise our children. I have to say kudos to this generation. I don't think my gen my, our parents' generation did so well, but mm -hmm. I think this newer generation is a lot it. more woke and they're trying to really balance out career and, and developing empowered women and, and upstand right and males as well. So kudos to you guys. as well. Kudos to you guys, and I really hope that, you know, God will continue to bless the efforts and really seal it in, because children can wake up and decide who they want to be, but I mean, the effort is good. Yeah. You can have a son today and have a daughter tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a fact and a big worry, but it's okay. When you get to that bridge, you will cross it. <laughs> okay, so Nigeria's um, social media space has been heated in the last... 48 hours for many unpalatable reasons. At the forefront being the death of Uwa Omozowa, a 22-year-old student of the University of Benin, who was raped and murdered in a church in Edo State, Nigeria. A number of Nigerian celebrities have lent their voices over the issue, calling for justice and a better system that protects women and the girl child. Now popular Nigerian singer Tiwa Savage was very active as she started a movement with the hashtag, we are all tired. Um, in a series of tweets, she highlighted poor power supply, dilapidated hospitals, senseless killings, police brutality, rape, and other societal issues, telling the government we are tired and things need to change. Hmm. I think this weekend was really draining yeah. emotionally for me. Um, at some point, I'll just log off, i log out, and mm. then you come back, you realize that somebody's telling another story, <clears throat> and it's even worse than the one you're running away yeah. from. Um, I think it's even more exhausting when you have to deal with accommodating diverse opinion, actually diverse opinion that are absolutely wrong and don't even un and you realize that some people don't even understand what consent is or understand how deep mm. the issue we are facing in Nigeria is. So um, my heart goes out to the family of um, Uwa. I hope that um, they find closure somehow, but. Um, there is a big issue. Oh, there, there are, there is. are there's a, is it our is there are problems in this country. I, I have to agree with you when you said that it's been draining. Um, this morning, for some reason, it was very hard for me to come to work because I kept thinking, am I actually safe? Living alone, am I actually safe? Am I, the, God forbid, am I the next hashtag? Like, these people, it's no longer what you did or what you didn't do, what you dress, who you, it's like we're not protected in any way, not by the government, not by the citizens. It's easy to point fingers, but there's something inherently wrong with a lot of people. Um, and, and I think enough is enough. With the, with the violence against women, with police brutality, um, you, you, at first you think, oh, it's America and the history. Well, what was our own history? Why people are not here? What's the problem? Um, there's just so much hate, and I wish there was something that I could do about it. So yeah, I 100% stand with Tiwa that we are tired. I'm very tired, very exhausted. I feel very useless, like the problems are bigger than me. Yeah. And every time this thing comes to the table, I don't have anything fantastic to say because I feel like I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm not making any impact, if that makes sense. Like I, I want to just be able to change things, go to people's hearts and really change it. But how can I possibly do that? We are definitely tired and I, I applaud Tiwa Savage on this one because um, I think this is something that a lot of celebrities should be doing, like focus on societal issues. Even if it's like, let's have a day, like once in a month, we connect with your fans, talk to people, go on the street, find out what people, because people would tend to share all their problems with you because you're a public figure regardless whether they know you or they don't know you. So you're in a position to actually speak to people and change lives. So if all celebrities should do this, maybe, maybe, maybe not. We may just get some of this, um, what's it called now, hoodlums and um, irresponsible boys that feel like 
it's okay to rape a woman without her consent. And the saddest part of Uwazon was that this was a girl that was reading in church. Mm. Not only was she trying to better her future by studying, she was also in the house of God. Mm. And then you still perpetrated such an hideous crime in the house of God and you think you're going to go unpunished? Mm. I just hope that justice catches up with everybody that was a member whether you're the watch guy or you mm. heard about it and you have not told anyone mm. or you were passing by and you heard someone scream mm. god we punish all of you <laughs> i, li I like that fact. you put it that way yeah. and i hope that that will be that will serve as a call for anyone who has any lead that can help the policemen right now because mm. um from what is in the news and the communication they are passing they kind of don't have anything concrete to link them to those that they would say um, did um, this hideous crime, but of course investigation is still ongoing. But away from that and looking at rape in a larger context as regards to Nigeria, I would want to say that us now as a people, I think we need to do better. Because um, coming online and having hashtags, I'm taking this way back to 2016, if I can remember correctly. And that was when we had the first ever, say, online bloggers going all the way out to do a Say No to Rape campaign. And I was largely part of that. And this is 2020, how many years down the line? And our policies is still the same. Nothing is going on regarding um, the laws and trying to change it to at least make sure when there is a case like this, um, justice is at least served, right? Um, so I just want to speak to the conscience of our lawmakers. I don't know what laws or bills they are proposing and what they are looking into or what their priorities are, which is why on Friday when we had the conversation, it was really heartbreaking to talk about what the wife of um, the Kaduna State Governor said on Twitter, that she doesn't have anything like first lady in her bio. Yes, I think there's a lot of controversy when it comes to the roles of first lady in Nigeria, but you're a woman. You should be able to sit your husband down or sit the people down to say what are the steps that need to be taken to make, make sure these policies or these laws are amended so that when these crimes, I mean, it's not going to be a case of there will be a crime of rape, but if there is a crime and there is, um, what's it called now, due consequence for this action. I'm sure a lot of people will be able to seek help if they truly need help mm. or at least stay away from doing things like yeah. that. So I think we all need to do better and start asking the right questions. What do we need to do to make sure that this law that makes it easy or yeah. the system that makes it easy for a rapist to go free is changed and and gets better. So I think the little, I the little that I followed in regards to the um, bro probing that was happening with uh, le lecturers and students, which is a f in, in a way a form of, yeah. of, of rape. I think when I saw that was when I realized that, yeah, we, we, ha we are in the wrong hands for sure, because I know they kicked that bill out and they said that it's stigmatizing male lecturers. lecturers. So Imagine. people are trying. I think a lot of people are trying, a lot of NGOs, a lot of um, non-government, uh, non-privatized spaces. People are, as individuals, I guess, not because we can't rely on anyone else to do it. But the problem is really big. And it seems like we, they don't want that change. This rape thing that was screaming, if you look at all the people that have the power to do something about it, they haven't done anything about it. And as for me personally, I'm going to take that silence as saying that you like what is going on. You like or the you fact that- Or you're even a perpetrator. Yes, so. you like the fact that you are being protected. Because for me, if you're going to protect somebody else, you, you want to be protected as well. Like, why would I want to protect a rapist if I'm, if I myself, I'm not a rapist. So I think that enjoying the the vicious cycle that's going on, if you look at them, the, the, I've given figures on this table many times. The amount of people who get assaulted, who get raped, but that are children and women, are large and there's more women in Nigeria than men. Mm. So that means that we have a lot of men who are abusers and they like the, and, and it's a man's world, it's definitely a man's country. Most of the the, part, the lawmakers are men. So it, it, you can't, it's hard to convince me that this isn't a battle of genders and that men, the people who are in, in power, power, love this thing. <sighs> Okay, um, I think there is a subtle protest going on today. Um, some people, uh, or people who are interested, are supposed to wear black and carry out um, a placard oh, to just yeah. write, say no to rape or whatever message is strong and take a picture and post on social media. So if um, you want to, then well, go ahead. But uh, moving on, Nigerians bash slim case over comments on George Floyd and um, Tina. So this is another ridiculous one and quite sad. So um, slim case shared a 
photo of um, George Floyd and of course solidarity and blah 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 and then someone says why um, questions um, why Nigerian celebrities are quick to solidarity first is post about George Floyd was even was very yes it was very sensitive as well anyway so <laughs> the person was saying why do you people why are you guys quick to jump on um, the bad wagon of a global issue or an issue that's not happening in Nigeria, but we have somebody that people are raising their voice to say justice for Tina, and I think that's on the police brutality side. Mm. And then he says, ah, how did he even put it that again? It's a global pandemic, George Floyd is a global pandemic, mm. and let, let channels, let talk channels about focus the on the Lagos girl. girl. Like, who talks like that? Slim case, of course, with um, twerking girls. He needs to be cancelled, like, yesterday. This is somebody mm. that I will, if you need to, I start the hashtag. They need to cancel this person. It's, it's, it's nice how the topic just flew because I would confidently say that he is part of the men that I'm talking about that are oppressive. Because if you have that type of mindset to even uh -uh. the boldness to tweet that, I don't know how you behave. I'm telling you because out of the mouth is whatever. What's the Bible scripture? Help me. <laughs> it's very that knows. Right? Out of the abundance, abundance of your mouth, heart is how. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you cannot tell me that you respect women. Not even respect women. That's even too much to ask for because I know you don't see us as equal. You respect humans. This person has died. And you don't even see the courtesy to just be a little more cautious with your words. Even the person that you are claiming you are in solidarity with, as as if I had mentioned, your 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 message was ridiculous. Like you had you have a problem, sir. That's all I can say. A serious problem. And um I don't know about um, him being cancelled. I just think that a lot of people tend to jump on things they don't even have an idea about. Well, that was his excuse, which I wasn't buying, because if you knew she was a Lagos girl, and if you knew Channel should be carrying that story, then you knew about it. So you coming out to say, oh, I didn't know about Tina. Is that what he said? He, he, he dropped an apology saying that he didn't know about it before he wrote nah, that's, that. that's a lame apology. That's, no, that's, 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 that's a big fat lie yeah. because you knew she was a Lagos girl. You knew I'm just Channel worried about the focus. little girl because I hardly check posts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. But you knew Channel should focus on Lagos girl. Yeah, Amazing. so like the lie didn't even add up. So I just feel like... Um, if you don't know I about the him, issue, please. maybe you don't know a lot about the issue, then don't speak on it. Do you need and to you know a even... lot about somebody who's died because the police shot them? Mm. What are we? Is this on a dissertation? This is not like a final yes or, me, or like 3,500 word article. It's simple. Someone somebody died. Of police brutality. Of, that, like it's, it's not complicated. There's not, there's not levels to this thing. It's and then very simple. Considering, um, George Floyd, where he said um, it's a global pandemic. Someone said first he thinks George Floyd stuff is a global pandemic. How stupid can he get? Yeah. And they had to explain what a pandemic is to slim case. How would you say the death of somebody is a? Global I don't know how you guys are surprised actually, because I um, I'm trying not to talk too much on this issue, so it won't look like it's coming from a place of dislike. I mean, I I've, I was never a fan of slim case anyway. Who was a fan of slim case? <laughs> Okay, tea time. Are fans? <laughs> tea time continues right on? after this break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I they see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Right now? Oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Make music and people are still by. Some say they look myself minimal. Are you? Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Welcome back. Tyler Perry urges people to stop looting amid Black Lives Matter protests. Following the death of George Floyd, people took to the streets to protest police brutality across um, America. And Perry said there are people and other countries who are posting things pretending to stand for peaceful protests, but they are trying to incite violence and chaos in America. He urged people not to fall for the foolishness and to stop the violence. 
Phil Martin. <laughs> uh, it, it didn't really sit well with me 100%. Um, Why? I felt like I was tracking him because he's one of those people that in the history of, um, will I say when, they, when it's hot, um, he always has something to say. And I think he's so influential, especially, he's a different type of celebrity in terms of the black community, where I feel like he's really attached to the grassroots. Yeah, he's lot, invested in the black community. Yes, and it lower type um, class. So I feel like he should be addressing people with a lot more sensitivity. Don't um, you know Tyler is an Oreo? I don't think so. He is. Personally, I don't think so. But um, I think he he is um, a bit, he's, his reality is a bit skewed. And I think that happens with money and privilege and all that. First of all, you can't ask people not to protest. Um, I think people have the right to protest. No, he's not saying they shouldn't protest. Yes. He said they should stop looting and the violence. I, 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 the violence. I was coming, but in his, okay. in, even in his caption, he did say, don't fall for it, stay at home. He's, he's not just talking about looting. He's talking about protesting as well. All, most of the videos I have seen, a lot of them that are, Looting are not even just blacks. There's a lot of people who are out there to mm -hmm. just do stupid things, and that comes with it. It's not helpful when you go tone deaf to the issues at hand. Like if I'm beginning, it, it, it vibes me like Black Lives Matter. I say, oh no, but all lives matter. Let's relax. Like that's Did what it seemed like. That was screaming all lives matter that got bitten and scar burns. Did you see? <laughs> White guy. I, and then it, it, it was it's the arrow. too tone deaf. There is a bigger issue at hand. What do you have to say regards to that? Like, people's bodies are hot and they have a right for their bodies to be hot. Like, blood is pumping. You can't now say, guys, relax, they're violent. Like, mm, I don't know. I just felt I, I expected more. So, you would have been more comfortable if he had come out to say this and, in the same vein, at least yes. support the movement. Yes. If he was showing, if, yeah, he if he showed that, if he showed that, I just followed, uh, followed a page called Something Good News. They really, that, like, they were positive. Um, fit to my timeline and everything they're always uploading the love and everything and they first started with the people the blacks that made a chain to protect one um uh, police officer white police officer that had been um detached from his follow and they obviously they were going to beat him and kill him that was nice but then he started to get a lot more like merry-go-round and like it was too lovey-dovey yes we want peace and we want love but you need to remember the issue at hand like it is not child's play we're not here to make you feel nice and like have a lovey-dovey conversation and be no we're trying to say stop it enough is enough and if you don't have that balance for me you are ignoring the issue and i didn't like that in my opinion um two wrongs don't make a right yes we're protesting and we're saying black lives matter and we want the police brutality to stop globally not just in america globally but at the end of the day if you're going about it the wrong way it's just like in the court of law. Well, you've gone about it the right if, way. Nothing has happened. If it's just like in the court of law, where um, if you get evidence via criminal means, or oh, yeah. it wouldn't be valid in the court of law. So if we're saying we're fighting for justice and we're going about it the wrong way, but the wrong way, you, you said um, you, you, we've been doing it the right way and nothing has happened. Mm -hmm. So it's the right way looting and showing that this is no, what, but he's not I'm saying, saying the right way is, is, is this is this no? I'm just saying I'm not saying you. I'm saying so. Is this what we represent? Because at the end of the day, white people now have jumped on that thing. But when they are going to put it out there, they would ignore the white people completely. Mm. And say when the black people were protesting, the stores got looted. One thousand stores got looted. Well, you remember, Ifeoma said something, and um, I picked on that, which is that it comes with it. It you doesn't can't... come with it. Um, it to different. a large extent, I remember when we had the little drama in Nigeria. Let me not call it little because a lot of people lost a lot of things then as well. The xenophobia thing when we had like the ripple effects mm. back here, and people were saying they were trying to protest, and then mm -hmm. looting happened, right? Yeah. Um, there are people or bad eggs that will always want yeah. to hijack any movements for their own yeah. good, whatever it is they want to achieve. I don't know, but that would always happen. And I, it, this matter is too sensitive because Black Lives Matter has been a trending hashtag for as long as I know. Like, it's always been there. There's always been one form of police brutality mm. or another. They've had to do a lot or series of movies for you to understand where this hurt is coming from and how much is affecting them. So if all that had been done and even the president of the country cannot take that as a priority to address the issue then right now it's even difficult for yeah. even the same minded person to come out to and, and, blame these people and, and have, for being this aggressive and you also have to put into consideration that everyone who is super close to this incident hasn't said what you've said they go out there for peaceful protest the, the um, police retaliate differently you have the bad eggs coming out but are you going to tell people whose lives are being taken every day to stay at home and say what you've said 
you are in Nigeria. You are not experiencing the same thing. And um, um, what's his name? Tyler Perry. Same thing. All the people who are closer to the issue sound different. No, even when they are all, addressing, I'm just saying. Let's. Uh, the reason why I remember that up was because you mentioned sensitivity, and I think it's important to remember that until it's biting you the same way, I think we need to be really careful. And you have another alternative to give them to say this is how you can help the situation rather than sitting at home in your lavish house that's protected. Then yeah, I can have another conversation. Okay, um, that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. Of course, do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter at us at TV Africa. Also, send your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906057019. My thank you, as always, go to my amazing co anchors, Ife Oluwa Shonke. Yeah, that's me. And Ife Omai, the sensible one, <laughs> and the entire production team. My name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and happy World Parenting Day.